What's going on guys? Welcome to Tech Savvy Buyer. So you finally hacked your Vita and if you haven't already, you should go ahead and take a look at this guide and click on it and follow all the directions that I laid out on how to go ahead and hack your Vita. But let's assume that you have a hacked Vita at this point and you really don't know what you're supposed to do with it or what you can add to it. So in today's video, what I'm going to show you guys is how you can load RetroArch on it, how you can load Adrenaline, and how you can load Moonlight. These are the three things that I'm going to show you today. RetroArch is a custom open source software that lets you run all kinds of emulators so you can play PS1 games, you can play all kinds of Nintendo Game Boy games, um, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, you get the gist. In addition to that, what we'll do with Adrenaline, that's basically a custom PSP software that runs on the Vita, which basically makes your Vita behave like it is a PSP. And you use that to play PSP ISOs and you can play PS1 games on that as well. And the wonderful thing about it is it runs full speed. Now, the third thing that I mentioned is Moonlight, and Moonlight is specific for people who own a gaming PC with a NVIDIA graphic card that's at least older than a 660 series. So once you have that, you can connect your Vita to the PC over Wi-Fi and actually stream all your games, such as Fortnite, Resident Evil, pretty much anything that you want, you can stream it to your Vita over Wi-Fi if you have a strong connection and game on it that way. So what you'll need for this video to take place is you're gonna need a list of all the different files that we're gonna be downloading, and I have them in the description below. We're gonna jump over to the PC. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to download and we're gonna cover everything that goes on from your computer first. So we're gonna do all of the files at once, load it into your Vita. And then after that, we're gonna go into the Vita. I'll show you guys what selections you have to make, how to install them and all the different cool things. So if all this stuff goes well and I seem to get a lot of traffic on this video and I can tell that you guys are really interested, the other thing I'll try and show you guys is how you can use a micro SD card with the help of a special adapter that you can purchase for your Vita and load and get away from you know the expensive memory cards that used to be sold for the Vita and use any SD card pretty much. And you can use that to copy your games on there, your backups, all that kind of good stuff that you want to do, whatever you basically want to do with it. But if I don't get enough traffic, either way, I'm going to put the link to a pretty good tutorial by Tech James in the description below. You guys can go and check him out. He's got some really good, good tutorials and actually I learned a lot of this stuff from him. So do check him out when you guys get a chance. Anyways, let's jump into it. Let's hop over to the PC and let's begin our venture into adding some cool stuff to your hacked Let's go. Okay guys, so just before we head over to the computer, what we're gonna first do is make sure that our Vita has Henkaku running. So to verify that, we just wanna go over to our settings and make sure that you see Henkaku settings there. So once you see that, we are pretty much good to go. So in the last tutorial, I showed you guys how to go ahead and do that with HN Core and how you can get Vita Shell, which is basically a way to see all your contents on your Vita's memory card on your PC. So over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press select and that's basically gonna let you connect this Vita to a PC system. So now what you can do is it's ready to go ahead and connect over to your PC and you could just go ahead and plug in the USB. And that's it. Now we can go over to our PC. All right, so we are on my PC now and you guys should be following along and this is gonna be pretty straightforward. So first thing you'll notice is that we plugged in the Vita and you should be able to see if you have a memory card, how much storage is in there. So in this case, mine's actually coming up as drive F. I know I've got I need to do some cleanup, guys. <laughs> so looking at drive F, this is what you're gonna see in the Vita shell. Now, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go into view, you wanna click on hidden items so that you could see all the different stuff that's in there. You also wanna select options, go to view, and you wanna scroll down and you wanna make sure that you have unchecked a file that says hide protected operating system files. So this used to be checked for me, but you wanna make sure that you keep this unchecked. Okay, and you'll get this little error pop up, just click yes, whatever, we don't care about that. We'll go ahead and click apply, we'll go ahead and click okay. Now you should see a list of all these folders. And this is important because you're gonna be copying certain things into some of these folders that were originally hidden. So now once that we have this complete, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start downloading the different files that I've laid out for you guys. So the first thing you wanna do is click on the link in the description to get to RetroArch's website and go to their download section. You're gonna scroll down here and you're gonna go ahead and download the PS Vita application. So we're gonna click download, and we'll go ahead and start downloading that. It's about 130 MB, so depending on your internet, it might take a few minutes or seconds or whatever. So basically, it'll go ahead and do that. Now, we'll head over to the second file part of RetroArch, and this is actually a theme file for the RetroArch. Basically, what this does is it makes the theme look like the XMB icons that you see in PSP or the PS3. 
So it just makes it a lot easier to navigate through and a lot of people typically see this. So you'll be confused if you don't install this when you see an older or like the generic version of RetroArch. So again, that has also downloaded. Now you've got everything you need for RetroArch. Now we're gonna go ahead and download the Adrenaline VPK, which is again, the stuff that's gonna be used to emulate PSP on the Vita. And last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and grab Moonlight. So click on Downloads and basically it's just gonna actually scroll down, find the one that says for PS Vita and click Download. Now it's going to open up another page here. You'll see that it has the latest version here. Scroll down and you want to get the VPK. So right now you guys can probably tell that PS Vita apps are installed as VPK. So pretty much basic stuff there. Now that we've gotten all the files that we need, we can go ahead and close out of this. So first things first, like I mentioned in my last video and you guys who follow me typically know I like to keep my stuff pretty organized. So what I went ahead and did before is I created a folder and I called it PS Vita Homebrew. And I actually assigned this file folder as my download location for Chrome, just so everything comes straight in there. Now the only thing we need to do in here right now at this point is go ahead and extract the Vito Retro Arch file. And you can just click, well actually the best way to do it is just right click and click extract here. It's the quickest. All right, so now you see you've got this folder here. You can go ahead and delete this now because you don't need that any longer and you're pretty much good from there. So here we have the PS Vita drive. Like I showed you, mine was labeled drive F. What we're gonna do is copy all three of these just to the root of the Vita. So once it moves there, give it a few seconds depending on how fast your computer is. Again, this is over USB. You can additionally do this over a file um, FTP server. I don't like to do that just because it's slow and I like to do things quicker, but it's totally up to you guys. If you want to do that, there's some good guides out there on the internet that you can check out as well. Now, the last thing we're going to copy is RetroArch. And you can see that this has a whole bunch of different folders. So this is going to go over to the data folder inside the Vita. So you'll go ahead and copy that in there and let it do its thing. The, this one actually might take the most time just because there's quite a few files on there. So now that you have RetroArch and Moonlight and Adrenaline copied over, you kind of want to figure out how you're going to get your games in there. So I already created some separate folders where I have some PSP ISOs and I've got some PS1 games. Now the PS1 games, you can see the format is an eboot.pvp and you typically won't see this. When you download a PS1 game, you're going to see them in bin files and queue files. So I'll actually put a link in the description on how you can go ahead and convert those over to eBoot files. Just makes it a lot easier. Okay, so finally that file finished downloading. Now what I did in between as well, just inside the homebrew, I just created another folder and called it RetroArch ROMs. You can call that file whatever you want. It's just a, a folder that you're gonna put your games in. And if you want, you can even sub folder this by putting you know, a specific location you want for Game Boy ROMs, for ones that you want for Sega or for Super Nintendo, it totally just depends on you. Anyway, so what we're going to do is start copying over some ROMs. So I'm going to go over into SNES, look at my ROM collection, and I've got a pretty massive collection of ROMs here, clearly. Yes, I backed all of these up. <laughs> but jokes aside, so let's copy, um, let's go and get Earthworm Jim. That's one of my favorite games or one of my favorite games. If you guys haven't played it, you need to play this. So I'll go ahead and click, double click. I'm gonna go ahead and select extract. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this into my downloads, into the PS Vita Homebrew and into RetroArch ROMs. So I'm gonna use that as my example for a game. Um, actually I'll toss in Doom in there as well, why not? And I hate when that happens by the way. So anyways, you guys get the gist of it. It's pretty straightforward, nothing super complicated, just putting some ROMs in the folder. Okay, so now let's head back over to that. We got our RetroArch ROMs, and we're gonna take this and we're gonna copy the ROMs file or folder into the root of the Vita drive. So again, it was drive F for me, went ahead and copied it in there. Now, another thing that you wanna start copying in there are your PSP games and your PS1 games. So PSP ISOs, I have these two. Gonna go ahead and click copy. And this is gonna go inside the PSP email. So again, you wouldn't see this if you didn't have your view enabled. So we wanted to go and do that just so we could see this. Inside here, you should have a folder that says ISO. If you don't, you can go ahead and just create one. 
Sometimes when you follow guides and you're like, hey, where did that folder come from? It wasn't in there. Just go ahead and create it. It's not a big deal. So we'll give that about a minute while that goes and copies. And then what we're going to do in addition to that is open the PSP folder and the game folder. And in here is where you're going to paste your PS1 game folder. So again, we're going to hop back out, go to our downloads in our homebrew folder or sorry, not homebrew, but PS1 games. And we're going to copy this entire folder as it is into the PSP game folder paste. So while all that stuff goes ahead and finishes up, we will pretty much be done from the computer once this is finished. And then we're going to go back on the Vita. I'm going to show you what you need to do from there. At this point, if you're not copying any more ROMs or ISOs or any games from your computer, you're done with the computer. So if you're this far in the video, Congratulations, you guys are doing fantastic. Okay, so your Vita probably went to sleep while all that copying was going on because mine finally finished. All we're gonna do is swipe and now we can go ahead and press circle to disconnect. So what we wanna do here, you see there's a whole bunch of different folders and really what these dictate are the different locations in your Vita where memory is being stored. So let's go ahead and unplug that, whoops. And the main location where our inbuilt or built-in memory card is that we stored in is stored in UXO. So once we click that, you're gonna go down and you'll see all those VPKs that we copied on here. So you see RetroArch, Moonlight, and Adrenaline. So let's start with RetroArch first. We'll go ahead and hit X and we'll hit X again and let it go ahead and install the VPK onto it. And you're gonna follow this the same step for Moonlight and Adrenaline as well. So. I don't know if you guys really want to see this, but it might take a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this here and we'll pick up when all three of those have installed. I had a little guest join in here and kind of interrupt my flow. So you should might as well say hi. Go ahead and say hi to everyone. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Say thank you. Thank you. And say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Awesome. All right, let's get back to work. All right, back to business. Apologies, guys. Now, when you try and install Adrenaline, you might actually get this message that says you need to obtain or make sure you use unknown sources, that this is dangerous and blah, blah, blah. So if you try to install it, if you don't have unsafe sources checked off in Henkaku settings, it won't install. If you do, it'll go ahead and install just like you guys can see here. So at this point, I have all three VPKs installed. We're gonna back out and you can see all three of those bubbles have now appeared. So let's go ahead and begin setting up RetroArch. So once you boot up RetroArch, this is what it looks like. You're just gonna scroll over. And the first thing you wanna do is scan over those ROMs that we copied. So we're gonna click scan direct. You gotta click circle to navigate in this. We're gonna do UXO because that's the base area. And then we have that folder called RetroArch ARMS. We'll just do scan this directory. So it's gonna start picking up the ROMs that I had copied in there. And once it's done, it'll just do that. Press X, go back. And you could see it captured the Doom ROM that I loaded. For some reason, I didn't pick the other one. I don't know why, but we'll go ahead and play this to see it works. Now, when you click on a game, you actually get an option to choose which emulator you want to use. Um, you guys can pretty much use whichever one you want. The one that works better, sometimes there are compatibility issues and some ROMs work better in a 2005 model versus a 2010 or even a 2002. I'm just going to go with 2010 just cause and then click run. And there we have it. The game is booted up for Doom on Super Nintendo. Go ahead and close and now let's move on to the next thing what we're going to look at is adrenaline this is the psp emulator so when we click on this we go ahead and click start first thing it says is that the 6.61 firmware is not installed press x to download it so we'll press x and we'll go ahead and let it download do its thing and it'll install it itself so i'll see you guys when this gets done so once it finishes downloading it installs and it kind of kicks you out just like i got kicked out here we're going to go ahead and click it again click start and this time it's going to boot up and it's going to take us into the PSP menu that you guys are used to seeing on older school PSPs similar to this bad boy here remember this guy that was cool oh well so oh it says install it again so we'll press x again and it's going to load it it's going to go ahead and create directories and hopefully this should work look at that looks like some code from matrix well let's let it do its thing and then we'll touch base so once it finishes, it's going to say installed successfully and press X to boot. So we'll go ahead and press X, let it boot. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it works this time, guys. It 
So once adrenaline is loaded, you get a full on customized or actually original firmware of PSP, which is pretty cool if you ask me. This is pretty sick. So it works just like a PSP with the exception of, I guess, the camera. I don't know if I messed around with that, but you could see where we had loaded the games from our PC. They should be showing up here and they are. Um, I'll just go ahead and check Killzone Liberation just to make sure everything works fine. And you guys can mess around with this as much as you want. So pretty much you're free to load whatever ISOs you have for PSP onto this and the PS1 games following that method. Again, for PS1 games, this won't detect .bin .q files. In fact, it's gonna work just like if you had a hacked PSP and how you would load games on that. So you'd have to convert those bin and Q files over to eBoot files which is pretty straightforward. It isn't something difficult to do. And I'll link that in the description as well, where you can see a video on how to do that. We have Killzone running on here. It's Killzone Liberation, the PSP version. And that pretty much is it. So now let's go ahead and check out the last thing, which is Moonlight. Okay, so by this point, you guys have installed RetroArch and saw how that works. We've installed Adrenaline and I showed you guys how that works. Now let's go ahead and set up Moonlight. And I actually lied to you guys before. You're gonna need to go back to your computer for a split second to set this up. Okay, so once Moonlight boots up, this is the screen you presented with. So the first thing you need to do here is get your IP address from your PC. So we're going to head over to the computer and we're going to find out what our IP address is. And then we're going to go ahead and enter it here to see how this connects over to our PC. Okay, guys, back at the PC, we've got a couple of things that we need to do. So first things first, you want to make sure that you have GeForce Experience installed on your computer. Chances are if you have a NVIDIA gaming graphic card and you're looking to do all the streaming, you already have this. So I'm not going to walk you through the instructions on how to do it because it's pretty basic. You wanna go over to settings, you wanna go down to shield and make sure that game stream is set to enabled. Once you have that enabled, that's basically gonna let you connect your Vita to the PC's GeForce Experience software. Anyways, the next thing we need is the actual IP address of this computer. So what we're gonna do is type in CMD, open up command prop, and here you're gonna type in IP config. Bring that in the center for you guys to see. It's pretty straightforward hit enter, and then it should give you this spit out here. So my IP address in this case is 192.168.0.190. So we're gonna go back to the Vita, we're gonna go ahead and enter this code into the Vita, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so my IP address was 192.168.0.190, and we're gonna hit enter. Now it's gonna start connecting to it. Now this could take a while, and if it doesn't connect right away, then you have an issue with your Wi-Fi, but otherwise it should connect. All right, so once it finishes connecting, you'll see that it detected your computer. It's gonna tell you what GPU you have. So I have a 1080 Ti in this. We're gonna click pair and we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we enter this code on our PC. So you might have a different code than what I have, but you're gonna go over to your PC and you'll see that it's prompting you for that. So here's the little pop-up. It's actually detecting your Vita as a shield. So my code was 0502. I'm gonna go ahead and click connect. And once I do that, the Vita should show it. Okay, so now we are actually connected to the PC and you can see I have my list of different games that I have on here. I'm just gonna go ahead and click any one of these. So let's go ahead and try Resident Evil 2 since I really like that these days. And it's gonna start streaming it. And you guys can see it successfully booted into my computer and we've loaded up Resident Evil 2 on this. So let's go ahead and see if it actually worked. Go ahead and hit start or X. And the wonderful thing about Moonlight is that it actually maps your buttons automatically too. And you can go ahead and configure those if you want to. But depending on your bitrate, your computer and your internet speed might make this a laggy experience or it might not. So let's just check what we can do here. Um, let's just load something at the beginning of the game. So again, this is being streamed from my computer and not from a PS4. This, so this is not remote play. There we go. See how it moves. Okay, so not the most smoothest gameplay. And again, you could adjust the settings inside Moonlight to have better um, latency free gaming by selecting the right bitrate for your internet. So this is kind of hard to play while I'm recording. But anyways, you get the gist. That's how you get to play different games with it. So we'll go ahead and back out. I'll go ahead and quit it. And that's pretty much it, guys. All right, guys, so welcome back. Now you officially have a fully hacked and modded PS Vita. So you got all your games loaded on here or different types of emulators like we went through in this video. Let me know how that was for you guys. Was that pretty simple? Was that straightforward? Did you like this tutorial? I know it's a bunch of questions, but anyways, I put a lot of effort in this for you guys. So hit that thumbs up button if you guys liked it. And if you think I could use some improvement, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. I'm always open to feedback and criticism, as you guys already know. And of course, if you're new to this channel, man, consider subscribing here. I mean, you got to join this crew for sure. But anyways, guys, um, let me know if you guys want to see some more videos like this. I know I got a lot of requests from you guys asking to go ahead and hack the switch and I can show you how to do that as well if I get enough interest for it. So let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments below. And until then, I will meet you down there 
and see you in the next video.